keep going. So hello, everybody. This is the Jones Library Building Committee. I'm Paul Bachman, the town manager. I'm convening this meeting uh, until we get to our first item on the agenda. Um, we are holding this meeting virtually uh, under the laws of the Commonwealth that are in effect until April 1, 2022 at this point in time. Um, and the first thing I want to do is make sure everybody can hear and be heard. So I will just go across for the members. Uh, uh, Sean Mangano. Yes. George Hicks Richards. Yes. Sharon Sherry. Here. Austin Surratt. Here. Anika Lopes. Yes. Christine Gray Mullen. Here. Alex Lefebvre. Yes. And we have guests as well. Uh, Ken Romeo from Collier. Afternoon. And uh, Ken Guyette, you're there. Here, present, thank you. And Angela Mills. You're yes, here. thank you, Paul. Great, thank you. So the first order of business uh, that we have is for officer elections. So we need to, I've been serving as a, a chair pro tem, but we need to have someone who's willing to sit, serve in this seat permanently in the way we will well, at least not permanently, but for the time that they want to. Um, and the way we will do this is ask for nominations. Once someone, you don't need a second for a nomination. Once there is a nomination, I'll ask the person nominated if they would like to serve and I'll continue that process until there are no more nominees. Then we will go through the committee and ask for the name of the person they would like to serve, who they would like to have serve as chair. So I will open the floor for nominations if there's anyone who'd like to nominate someone and you can also allow self nominations. Sharon. I would like to nominate Austin Serrett. Austin, do you accept the nomination? Is this instead of the Supreme Court vacancy? <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay, then I accept. Good. Um, are there other nominations? Seeing none, no one eager to raise their hand. Um, so we do, we do need to vote, so I'll ask you to um, vote by saying yes or Austin's name. Uh, I'll go, oh, Christine, you have your hand I up. I support the nomination, but we had had discussion at the last meeting about waiting until we were a, a full committee and we're still down the other member. And I was just wondering what the status, is that gonna take so long? This is why we're going with officers. Mm -hmm. Good question. So we don't have that person yet. We're still in the interview stage for that. Um, so that would happen, could happen uh, as soon as February 7th, but no, there are no guarantees on that. Um, I think the need for a chair at this moment is more, is, is fairly urgent and the committee can always change that. Um, but it's up to the will of the committee if they would like to continue with the process or not. Any thoughts? Christine? Um, so what you're saying is the earliest it would be is the seventh. What would be the next? So then is it? It's then two? the next possible date is the 28th, I think. And when do we think we would have our next possible meeting? Like, are we going to go another month or two We have not had that discussion. Yeah. So I was just wondering, you know, if we're close to getting that other member, it would be nice to include them. But if it's imperative or a whole nother month or we need to take votes like I, I'm so I'm just pushing back a little not here mm -hmm. just wondering what the big push because you do such a great job Paul running the meeting <laughs> and you know I'm sure you know Austin is enjoying the vacation but mm -hmm. any other thoughts from members my own view is uh and again this has not to do with me personally we we need to get this is the second meeting we need we need to get in, in motion. Uh, we've got a lot of things already on our plate. And uh, I think the new person com comes on can be consulted and if necessary, we can change anything. But I do think we should get on with the business. Okay, thank you, George. Uh, I make a motion that we go forward with the process of electing officers. Okay, so there, uh, we already are in the middle of a motion. Uh, for the chair. So what you're saying is you're expressing the interest in moving forward. If that's correct, the correct. Sort of rule on that motion. What do other folks think? Sean, Alex, Anika. 
I support moving forward if the um, the new members can be consulted when the new member rather can be consulted when they come in. And there's yeah. flexibility. I agree with Anika. Okay. And Alex? In second grade, this means I agree. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we will uh, continue with the, with, the, with the vote for the chair at this point in time. And the next item will be a vice chair um, that we'd like if if we are comfortable doing that as well. So I'll go across my screen. Uh, Sean? Yes. Okay. George? Yes. Uh, Sharon? Yes. Austin? Yes. Anika? Yes. Christine? Yes. And Alex? Yes. Okay. So I turn the proverbial gavel over to Austin. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, it would be helpful if we could put the agenda up on the screen so I'll actually be able to remember what's on it. The next item is, uh, as I recall, uh, the question of do we want to elect a co-chair or a vice chair, rather, excuse me, a vice chair. Uh, do I hear a sentiment for a vice chair? Would anybody like to speak? Yep, Sharon. I nominate Christine Gray Mullen. Okay, uh, Christine, do you accept that nomination? Yes. Thank you. Okay, other nominations for vice chair. Okay, are we ready to vote? I will call your name as I see you on the screen. Sean? Yes. Sharon? Yes. George? Yes. Anika? Yes. Christine. Yes. Well, you got to try it again with a little more enthusiasm. Yes. There you go. That's much better. Alex. Yes. And Paul. Yes. Great. Okay. I am going to ask to put the agenda up. Angie, do you have the agenda? I do. And can you put it up on the screen? Absolutely. Thank you. Is it, um, I'll ask Angie. Angie, are you going to be the clerk, so to speak, of the committee? Are you going to take notes for us? Only until you fire me. Okay, good. that's totally fabulous. That is, that is totally fabulous. So uh, are you going to screen share the agenda? There it is. Yes. Fantastic. All right. So the next item on the agenda are the minutes of uh, January 12th. And we need a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Great. Uh, corrections to the minutes? Alex. Um, yeah, on the third page, these are, these are things I said, which I just am making a little correction on. Sorry, Angela. Um, <laughs> on the third page, second line, where it said Lefebvre questioned whether or not there needs to be a subcommittee for historic aspects of the building. Um, I just wanted to remove the word committee because that's duplicative. And, uh -huh. add, and a Angela has these changes, so she knows what I'm going to say. <laughs> um, and add, since we just received a historic structures report to guide those aspects of the project, because that was why I was questioning it. And then on the fifth line about uh, the sustainability where it says Lefebvre was hoping these individuals could be woven into the design and build process, um, change was hoping to stated it was the intention when this subcommittee was formed that and changed uh, could to would. So just clarifications on my, what I hope I said, I tried to go back to the recording, but it's not up yet, but. Alex, do these changes look correct? Are you seeing the minutes? Yeah, hold on, let me get it big. I've got half screen. Uh, building, since we just, yep, see it was the intention. Perfect, yep, thank you. Okay. Okay, other, uh, other corrections to the minutes? Okay, yeah, Christine.
Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, it just says four o'clock. Was it four or four thirty? I thought we started at four last time. That's my recollection. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Just other thanks. Other questions about the minutes? Okay, are we ready to vote on the minutes? Again, I'm gonna ask you to signify vote uh, vocally whether you approve the minutes. Sean? Yes. Thank you, Sharon. Yes. Anika? Yes. George? Yes. Christine? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Alex? Yes. Okay, again, uh, Angie, if you would screen share the agenda. I think the next item is to, we're gonna hear from Sean. Yeah, so there's not <laughs> much of an update um, since the last time. I did have another meeting with our financial advisor just to update him on the, the progress of this building committee and that we're moving forward. Um, we both agreed sort of our, our next step is once we get the designer on board and the designer and the OPM and, and this group have um, developed this project a little bit further in terms of the timing uh, and the cash flow, an updated cash flow for this project, that's when we'll re-engage with him to map out uh, whatever financing options we pursue. And then the only other thing I think that we're going to talk about soon is, is the, the contract for the designer. Um, and that will really dictate the rest of the, the uh, role. That'll be the next big financial element to this project. Um, and I think that's it. Great, thanks. Any questions about the financial update? Not I, I, I promise they'll get more interesting as we, as we dive into this further, or at least I hope they will. I can't promise that, I take that back. May I just ask Sean, just uh, could you just talk to us a little bit about how you foresee making the decision about the timing of borrowing? Um, yeah. So again, I, I think the the timing of the borrowing, the big so interest for those who are, are um, following, interest rates are starting to rise. Um, they're starting to tick up, and so there's a lot of um, th there's interest in borrowing as soon as we can. Um, to get the, the funds locked in at a low interest rate. And also because we have these other building projects coming up that to start making payments on this one and get this started. Um, so we have two options. We can borrow um, potentially this June and lock in that interest rate and start making payments as early as FY23. And if we did that, we would use um, the funds that we borrow to pay for all the costs of the project um, up until the point that we run out. And then we would switch over to the grant funds and um, as I said last time, the benefit there is we can generate returns on those grant funds and, and put that back into the project. Um, so, the, so that's sort of what I'd like to do. Okay. Um, the only caution I have and, and why I talk about the cash flow and the timeline is once you borrow money, um, you generally have a certain amount of time to spend it. And until we get real, you know, um, until we get clear on when the construction costs are gonna start, you know, the, the real significant bills for this project, um, we don't want to borrow too far in advance that we can't spend that money within um, really a year to two years or, you know, or most of that money. There's certain thresholds that you have to hit um, to keep for, for the bonds that we have uh, to keep certain types of tax statuses. So, so that's sort of the, the only caution I have to that option is, is the cash flow and making sure that we can spend the money within um, a certain period of time. Great. Thanks. Okay, if I see no other hands, okay. So uh, thank you, Sean. Uh, next, Ken from Colliers. Ken? Thank you, sir. Uh, so first thing I wanted to just touch on really quick is just introduce you to the newest team member uh, of Team Colliers for this project. While he is a new team member for our team, he's been with the firm for uh, over 20 years. So he's one of our more seasoned uh, senior project managers. And his name is Ken Romeo. Ken, I don't know if you want to just say a quick word. Please do. Sure. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to this meeting and uh, looking forward to this exciting project. As uh, Ken and I have talked about, I've worked on some library projects, but uh, nothing as historic as this one. I've worked on other historic projects in private schools. So uh, looking forward to uh, going through this whole process and getting the project done with all of you. 
and thank you. We're, we're really looking forward to working with you and appreciate all that you will do. Ken? Thanks. Thank you. So, yeah, so Ken uh, Romeo will be the one that will be, you know, uh, the, the day to day contact. I'll obviously still be heavily involved in this project, and anybody can call me at any time as well. Uh, but Ken is going to be, is definitely going to be the senior PM moving this thing forward. Um, the first item on the agenda that we had was the design firm fee overview. So we did finally hear back from Fine Gold uh, last night around 6 p.m. Uh, with their um, fee proposal. It's about 10% over budget right now. So I've already uh, reached out to Ellen to get a time uh, tomorrow to meet with her and her team to get that number down. There was also a series of additional services that they had uh, in that in that fee proposal that we want to see if we can just wrap up into one fee and just have everything uh, consolidated into one fee that that meets our budget. So that's still ongoing. Um, that is, I anticipate that that will be um, hopefully tied up and completed prior to uh, our next meeting. Uh, that was the intent, um, and so. Um, I will have more, definitely more information for you all on that as, as we get towards our next uh, committee meeting. So when I get that final proposal that seems to make sense from a budget and scope stand, standpoint, I'll make sure that that gets out to the entire committee prior to right. our meeting uh, so that we can um, be able to uh, have any conversations and answer any questions you may have on it by then. Any questions on that yet so far? Okay, great. The, the next item on the agenda is the project schedule. So as we discussed last time, this is going to be the, our first uh, real big deliverable with the design team coming out of the gate once they're on board is to uh, take the large macro schedule that we have, where it's broken out to big chunks of time and break those down into individual milestones with individual day dates that tie back to that overall schedule to make sure that we're, we're moving in lockstep and getting the project done uh, on time and under budget. So. Uh, that's something that Ken, myself, and Ellen and her team will be developing um, as soon as they're they're on board. Uh, and we will, um, if we are able to come to some sort of agreement on the fee um, in in principle before our next meeting, then we'll work on that schedule. So we'll have not only their fee to look at, but also a scheduled draft schedule for you to look at as well um, for our next meeting. The last item that I had on the agenda, uh, which uh, may uh, seem Ken, like before, you, before you go sure. on to the interim location, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Okay. Is there more work that Feingo will have to do in the so-called schematic phase before design development? I, I think so. I think they will have to revisit some of the items that came out of, um, you know, the last couple of years between the time that the, the, um, uh, the grant round started to where we're at today and make sure and confirm that some of those things are are really going into this package going forward right. and make right. sure that um, they tie all that into that design uh, development set as we start moving moving the project along. It's more of a scope confirmation, I think, at this point. And, you know, again, making sure the programmatic elements are appropriate and that, um, you know, the team is comfortable with that before moving into that next phase of design where it starts to really get locked in. Um, Good, thank you. Sure, no problem. So, uh, the, wait a minute, Ken, Sharon right. has a question. Sure. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to point out that one of the things we'll have to do is meet with the MBLC, um, like ASAP, um, <laughs> because they still have some concerns. And, and a benefit of us still being in the schematic design phase is that we'll be working with Eversource on um, the energy credit. So it's important to get in right. early. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Sharon. Okay, Ken. So item C, interim location. I know this seems like it's a long way off. I mean, we're probably a year away um, in reality for, for, for the existing building to be moving into its temporary location. So this is gonna be extremely important. That 12, 13 months is gonna go by in a flash. And there's a lot of work that has to happen between now and then. Um, we've got to work with Sharon and her team and the MBLC to confirm program that's got to go in these temporary locations, uh, this temporary location, we've got to um, take a, you know, take a, a look at what spaces are available for this temporary location and how that uh, is going to meet the needs of the, of the temporary library, whether it's on, you know, public transportation, uh, adequate parking, things of that nature. 
Uh, and then once we get to a point where we've located a, a space that's got adequate um, square footage, what's it going to take to get that space up to a level of, of uh, constructed construction that satisfies the needs of the temporary library as well? Are we going to need a, a circulation desk? Is there restrooms, um, you know, accessibility, all those things that are going to have to tie into this? It's a very lengthy process and we want to start on that immediately. So that'll be working. We'll be working on that in tandem with the, with the larger project um, with Sharon and her team and just want to just to, again make the committee aware that we'll be coming to them sooner rather than later with with uh, uh, information on that as we as we move that forward. And can a question and I'm sorry Sean. Thanks Austin. Um, Ken uh, is is there a contingency already within the project budget for the costs of that interim location? There there is a line item currently in the budget that carries uh, costs. Uh, and, you know, again, without knowing what that space is gonna be and the size of it, you know, we put in what we thought was appropriate based on historic, we've done this before, you know, and, and okay. you know, the, the costs seemed appropriate, but it's gonna really depend largely on where we're gonna end up and who we end up partnering with. And that covers things like moving expenses and then physical adjustments to the, the location potentially if that's needed. That's correct. Yeah, that's okay. the intent. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Ken. Paul? Paul, you're muted. Thank, thank you. Um, so a couple of questions. One is uh, in, term, in determining, um, explain to me the process for determining how much space, the more space we require, the more expensive it will be. So how do we get the most efficient use of space with the mandatory um, requirements of, of the um, services that we, we want and need to provide? And then how to, a follow-up question on that, how do branches play into that? And thirdly, does it have to be, we're looking for space for a couple building or for one building, and does it have to be within the bounds of the town of Amherst? Go ahead, Sharon. I know you are got your hand up. Yeah, Sharon. Great question. So first off, <laughs> I've been working with the staff. So they've been putting together the list of their requirements. And they're pretty reasonable. We're not looking at pie in the sky uh, requirements. Uh, we realize, for example, programming space probably isn't going to be a priority. As you said, the more space, the more expensive it's going to be. So we're working with the staff on what they think their needs are. We do know um, that we will have access to both branches. We'll be able to add staff there. We'll be able to add open hours there. Um, hopefully we'll be able to use the hall at the Munson so that that could be a great place for collections. Um, we could also, in theory, the North Amherst Library uh, expansion project will be done. And so there is a small-ish meeting space there. Maybe collections could go there. It's to be determined. Um, and yes, it does have to happen in Amherst. So that's definitely going to be a limiting factor. I think that's everything. Okay. Um, yeah, Christine. Uh, just to follow up on that. So is it actually two spaces? Like I assume that stuff needs to get put in one place that doesn't get touched. And then there's the actual running of the library and then there's stuff books and media that you'd want to get to in the short term. So is it one place, two place? How does that work? I, I have a feeling that it's going to be multiple places because we take up a lot of square footage. Um, so th that's just my gut. Uh, and I have a feeling there isn't going to be one place that will hold all of this. Yes, certainly stuff will be stored like a lot of our furniture, um, uh, you know, the fine arts collection that can be stored. But by law, our collections have to be made available. So, um, so there's that. And I take it, Sharon, that it would be um, appropriate to this conversation about the interim location will also involve the Board of Trustees of the library. And uh, we'll be thinking with the staff and working very closely with the town. Yeah, so what I understand from the, the, the committee charge, uh, it's our job to make re recommendations and right. then the town manager and the Board of Trustees would approve. Great. Okay, any other questions for Ken? 
Ken, thank you. And again, thank you for the work you've already, you've already done. Um, Angie, I'm gonna ask you now to take down the agenda, if you could. Um, great, thank you. Uh, the next item is the discussion of committees. And on the agenda are listed a design committee, an outreach committee, a sustainability committee, and a committee called Other. So I'm gonna actually ask Sharon uh, if she can talk us through a little bit about uh, what she sees these committees as uh, doing and uh, what her vision is of the number of people that should be on the committees. So Sharon. Uh, yeah, so I'd love more input from Ken uh, about this. Uh, so certainly because of all, as many committees as we have, they're all going to be publicly posted open meetings with meeting minutes and all of that. So I, I don't think we want to have a ton of, of committees and maybe we don't want to have a ton of committees all at the same time. I, I envision several different committees over the lifetime of the rest of the project. Um, in my mind, the design committee is like number one. Um, I think the outreach will be super important, especially once we get the our this building committee fully um, uh, fully formed. Um, and the sustainability committee. So um, I included that as Sean had said, we the library trustees have an existing sustainability committee, um, you know, for experts in this field. And so if we could somehow incorporate them into this work, that would be really lovely. But as far as the actual makeup, how many committee members, I, I haven't thought that far in advance. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm hoping Ken has recommendations. Yeah, that's 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 exactly right. I do have some recommendations. So typically for a, a design a design subcommittee, it may be two or three members of this committee. Um, you know, obviously the director uh, is going to have a big role in that and her staff. Her staff will get pulled in as needed. We'll have other consultants that get pulled in as needed, other town departments, uh, fire, police, things of that nature that get pulled in uh, as we're going through the design process. And it's really just Again, it's 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 a it's a committee that's able to get down into the weeds of of the design and be able to report that back to the to the full building committee, uh, so that the full building committee gets again gets their their input into the design of the project as well, uh, and and likewise with outreach and sustainability, uh, these are going to ebb and flow, um, so there are they are typically not going to happen at really at the same times. Uh, we're going we're gonna to be focusing more on design early on. Obviously, outreach is going to happen, like, like Sharon said, um, once the committee is fully informed. And sustainability, we'll probably get our marching orders early on and then check in uh, at periodically through the design phase to ensure that we're still meeting those, those goals that, that were established. Um, so really, it's, it's, it's you know, two or three individuals per, per committee, I think, at this point in time uh, that will expand with people outside of this committee um, as needed. And uh, uh, just to be uh, clear, Ken, from your experience, design, outreach, and sustainability is a reasonable place to start. Are there other committees, sub subcommittees that you think we might need? Yeah, there. so some districts and projects, depending on the project, may elect to do what we call a finance subcommittee as we get into construction. And they're predominantly looking at change orders and things of that nature at a greater degree after we've done our initial review we'll sit with the subcommittee and review it in detail so that when we report back to the building committee the building committee has a has a, the assurances of the subcommittee that it's been thoroughly vetted great so uh one other question sean and that has to do with the timing so the design committee design subcommittee uh kind of at what point do you imagine that group needs to begin to do its work. Yeah, so I think what we the first thing that we have to do is, is kind of get to the point where we've established the schematic design. And once we get through schematic design as we're working through design development, that's when it will be a good time to get that design um, subcommittee on board so that they can inform that, that development as it moves forward. Okay. So discussion of committees, do you have thoughts about uh, the committees that are before us, are they the right committees? Uh, what are your thoughts about committees?
Sean? They seem like the three that we've identified make sense. Um, and I'd be all for a finance one once you know we get more in, into the weeds on that. Um, but they make sense to me. Great, thanks. Paul? I, I agree with that as well. And I think um, if we need committees along the way, or if we need, some committees might have more work, like the design committee might have more participation. Or, and it all, but also I think Sharon mentioned these are all public meetings, so any member who would like to attend can attend. So I, I agree with starting with this group and then having finance ready to go when, when the time is right. Paul, I, uh, Sean, may I just ask one yeah. other question before? Paul, um, again, drawn on your experience, uh, the outreach committee, could you talk a little bit about what the vision is of that committee again and when you think it really ought to begin uh, to do its work, and could you say a little bit about what, uh, from your experience, the work of that committee would entail? So, I'd, other people can weigh in as as well. I think the success of this project will be measured in many ways by how successfully we've can you know engage with the community along the way in terms of the design, and I think making sure there's there'll be a lot of voices who have opinions and things to say. And we wanna make sure that we have ample opportunity for people to express those opinions, I think. Um, and so I, th I think that's why an early and often focus on outreach is gonna be really important. And I think there's a lots of different ways to do it. And we're gonna use lots of different tools, um, you know, electronic, in-person, um, you know, whatever it is that it takes. But I think the most important thing on this project is to be incredibly transparent and inclusive as much as we can. But they're also we need to measure that with being able to make decisions in a timely timely manner. Thank you, Paul. Ken, uh, can you say something else about the outreach committee? Yeah, I, actually, that's that's a that's a great segue, Paul. I, the one of the things, though, the last thing that you said is really the the thing I want to caution the committee on is just paralysis by analysis, and and that's um, you know one thing we just have to be mindful of. You know, there are, there are. Um, we do want to absolutely get impact, get in, input from the community, community, and, and from other constituencies. But you, you know, there's, there's, we have to weigh that against what the professionals um, that are that are utilizing this building day in and day out, that that uh, use these services day in and day out, um, and weigh that against each other, and just make sure that we're we're still pushing this project forward as we're as we're doing this. Uh, that's going to be the critical the critical aspect. Right. Other thoughts about committees. Yeah, Sean. So, um, if it's not part of the purview of this committee, then I'm totally fine with that. Is the is the relocation part, part does that fall under this committee, or does that fall under the library trustees? The relocation process and and decisions around that. Well, Ken, what has your experience been? My experience has been is that the building committee has handled that um, typically because it's part of their budget, uh, it's part of the so project budget. So if that's the case, I'm, we may want to consider that as a, again, I don't know if the full group needs to discuss all the, right. the finer details of that process, or you may want a committee that's um, dedicated to that. Great. Thank you. Okay. Other thoughts about committees? So what I'm uh, going to propose, if it's, it makes sense to you, is that uh, Sharon and uh, Ken and I will get together, uh, Christine and uh, talk about these committees uh, and maybe draft a charge for each of the committees. Are you good with that? And I take it, Paul, that the three of us and Ken don't constitute uh, a group, uh, or do we have to notice the meeting? Look at he's smiling at me. Oh, this is always the hard part. It's what's open meeting. Um, um, so you should post something, I would think, if you're gonna have this kind of conversation. Um, if, the, if, we're, okay. if, the commit, if this committee is delegating something to you to do, it's as if this committee were doing it. So uh, even if two people are de de dedicated to doing something, if you were okay. Austin on your own, we're going to draft up something and bring it back, that'd be totally different, you know? It's cold outside and I like company. So I think we'll, um... The four of us will get together and, and talk and then come back with proposal, okay? And uh, we will set, uh, if it's okay, we will set our, our a meeting to do that offline. 
and then we'll notice the meeting. Okay. All Thanks. right. So thank you, uh, Sharon, and thank you, Ken. Um, the next item on the agenda is a regular meeting schedule. So as I recall, last time we had agreed to meet every couple of weeks. Is that uh, what we had agreed to? So um, let's plan our next let's plan our next meeting a couple of weeks from now. So going to the calendar today is the 27th. Uh, the next meeting would be uh, February uh, February 10th. Does that work for people? No. Okay, that's what he said. That's not a good time. Um, again, I'm going to just are, are we thinking about Thursdays as a good day? Uh, Alex? So the Joint Capital Planning Committee starts meeting on Thursdays from five to seven, and that'll be for the next eight weeks. So okay. if, if yeah. gonna, that won't. And two weeks from it is also, there's a four towns meeting for the school department on that same evening. So shall we go to the following week, the week of the 21st of February, and uh, I'm just going to ask the Tuesdays work for people. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry what day are you talking? Tuesday, the Tuesday, the 22nd. What did we decide for the week of? Are I, we not I thought that there was a lot going on, so we were going to just okay. wait a week. So that's school vacation week. If, they, if that it doesn't impact me, but I'm not sure if it impacts other people. George, yeah, I'm off. George, yeah, I can't. I can't do that week. Okay. Uh, I resign as chair. Okay. No. 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 <laughs> Stop smiling. Okay. So let's see whether we go back to the previous week. So the week of. Um, Let's see. So that was the week of the 10th, the 7th. Okay. So the week of the 7th, uh, Tuesday, the Tuesday, the 8th. I mean, here's a, here's a, a Ken question. So that's a little less than two weeks. Uh, will you have things back from Feinkel Alexander, for example, in that time frame? Yeah, that's that's the hope, Austin. Yeah, that's, okay. that's definitely the intent is to try to get something back from them uh, by next week that we've got vetted and I can get off to the committee. Great. The eighth so does Tuesday the 8th work? Okay, that is fabulous. So let's put in um, in the book Tuesday the 8th at 4.30. That's 4.30. At, at, at 4.30, is that, is that good for people or would you like it at 4.00? Four thirty works. Well, so does that work for you, Anika? Four thirty. Yes, it does. Great. Okay, so let's say four thirty on the Tuesday, the um, the eighth, and then my question just has to do with whether or not we can kind of now. Do you want to use Tuesdays as our meeting day and try to put uh, every other Tuesday in the book for a while? The only thing I would caution on that. Mr. Chairman, is just the fact that the design team hasn't opined yet on their availability, and we would need them to be part of those building committee meetings. Okay, so uh, we'll 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 set our meeting for Tuesday the eighth, and then we'll we'll go from there. Uh, but uh, again, I just want to ask us: Are Tuesdays a good day? Generally, yep. Yeah. Okay, so let's put in pencil. And then we'll find out what they can um, what, the, what they can do. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next item: topics not anticipated by the chair. So, are there any anything else that we need to talk about that wasn't on our agenda, Paul? Anika had her hand up before me. I think. Sorry, Anika. I just wanted to confirm. So. The, will the meeting stay at 4.30 p.m.? 
I, I, if if we can, I think that's a, that's a good time. Okay. All right. Thank you. And Paul. Uh, so this is a question I think um, for the for Ken I think or Sharon is. Uh, as as we start taking on our charge, are there libraries that you would say, go visit this library? This is sort of what we're thinking right. about. I mean, I think we have some time to prowl around other locations that are like, this is exactly the type of thing we're looking for. These are, look at these three or five libraries over the course of the next month. Could you come up with a list like that for us? Sure. Yeah. That's great. Sharon, do you do you have preliminary thoughts on that list? Yeah, yeah. So you know, my initial is go see Cambridge. I think that's a, a great example. They've got an historic piece uh, that's tacked on to a you know a new a new piece, and it's you know you walk in the the sight lines are perfect. You know exactly where the elevator is. You either go up or down. It's just very clearly laid out. Don't laugh at me. Sure. <laughs> um, so. Cambridge is my number one, but yeah, there are certainly others that are in the area. Great, they have more Thank money than God. So, <laughs> Thank you. you're right. You're right, uh, Christine. Um, I know the professionals can weigh in on this, but uh, the Providence, Rhode Island Public Library opened last year with the renovation. They utilized an existing mm, like 1920s building, and it it seems to me that it's you know because they were confined to using the space that they had somewhat we have a little bit more um with an addition on there but is that one that people could look at sure Providence is my hometown i come <laughs> come with me i'll take you to some good restaurants george um, i would just say more locally the Hoyoke public library is another example of old meets new and they did a really good job of like bringing some of the old into the new uh, with their transitioning. So if you wanted to go somewhere local, that's that's a good option as well. That's that's an FAA project too, I think, correct? Fine, we'll do that project as well. So we'll come up with a list, right, Ken? You come up with a yes. list. Yep. That's great. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for raising that. George, your hand is still up or, oops, not. Okay. Uh, George, you're back. George, you're not back. Alex. Did we, I don't see the agenda, but do we need to do public comment? I'm not sure if that got skipped Comes over. next. Oh, see, I don't have the agenda in front of me. There you go. I'm used Comes to first. next. Yeah. <laughs> so anything else that we need to discuss that was not on our agenda at the time that this meeting was noticed? Okay. The next item is public comment. And I'm wondering if any of the attendees uh, would like to make a comment. If so, if you could raise your virtual hand or signify in some other way. Okay, I see no, um, no, no public comment. Uh, I wanna thank the- just, Can I just mention that there are five people in the audience just for reference, yeah, reference gonna, for folks out there. I was going to thank them for attending. Uh, thanks for your interest in the in the project. Okay, I think we have completed our agenda uh, and would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. This is second. Okay. Correct. Second. Thank you. Thank you. So again, I'm just going to, as I see you on the Zoom screen, Sean, Aye. Thank you. Ken? Excuse me, not you. You don't get to vote to adjourn. <laughs> okay. Although you are anxious to adjourn, you don't get to vote. George? Uh, yes. Sharon? Yes. Anika? Yes. Christine? Yes. Paul? Yes. Thank you, Alex? Yes. Thank you all, and we'll look forward to seeing you in a, in a, in a couple of weeks. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you.